today lies in our ability to recapture the revolutionary spirit, go out into a sometimes hostile world, declaring eternal hostility, poverty, racism, and militarism. Genuine revolution of values means in the final analysis that our loyalty must become ecumenical rather than sectional. Every nation must now develop an overriding loyalty, mankind as a whole, in order to preserve the best in their individual society. This calls for a worldwide fellowship that lifts the neighborly concern beyond one's tribe, race, class, and nation. Then reality a call for all embracing unconditional love for all men, is of misunderstood and misinterpreted concept, so readily dismissed by the Nietzsche's of the world as a weak and cowardly force, now become an absolute necessity for the survival of mankind. For hundreds of millions of years we have been asking the still unanswered, and it may be the unanswerable questions, whence, and whither, where did I come from and where am I going after death, broad. The truth is this, nothing less and nothing more, no person knows nor has any person ever known where we come from at birth or where we go at death. Anyone claiming otherwise is either deceiving himself or he is a conscious impostor who makes it a business to live without rendering service of value while preying upon the credulity of humanity. Three passions have governed my life. The longings for love, the quest for knowledge, and unbearable pity for the sufferings of humankind. Love brings ecstasy and relieves loneliness. In the union of love, I have seen in a mystic miniature the prefiguring vision of the heavens that saints and poets have imagined. With equal passion, I've sought knowledge. I've wished to understand the hearts of people. I've wished to know why the stars shine. Love and knowledge led upwards to the heavens, but always pity brought me back to earth. Cries of pain reverberated in my heart, of children in famine, of victims tortured, and of old people left helpless. I long to alleviate the evil, but I cannot, and I too feel pain. This has been my life. I have found it worth living. In our world today, we have humanitarian crises like never before in history. Even at what seems peacetime to most, we have crises right across the world, in the form of bullying at school, bullying at the workplace, domestic violence, and depression among the human race. No religion has cured this disease. No change of governments from any country has cured this disease. No agreement among countries has cured this disease. And no new laws have cured this disease. No amount of money that each country puts forth to solve this disease has succeeded. In fact, there is no known antidote for this social disease that the world faces, except this one single, simple idea that is proven to work.
the idea works. It's a proven fact that it works. There's no doubt about that. It's just a question of whether the governments they want to keep the same policy, neglect their own people in terms of, well, you know, let's leave things as they are. We don't want to live in a better world. This documentary deals in facts, not fiction. This documentary is a result of 20 years research into psychology, philosophy and self-improvement. The documentary is being made here in London, so we will focus on statistics concerning this country for now. But this affects the whole world, because crime and injustice is all over the world. This documentary is for the people of the world. Every living person on this planet will not be here in 110 years' time. My question to you is this. What kind of world do you want to leave behind us? According to a United Nations report, Britain has become the most violent industrial nation. The chances of being assaulted or mugged here are almost higher than America. London more dangerous than New York. Crime statistics for 2008 in the United Kingdom, 6,523,706 recorded crimes. Figures from the British Retail Consortium show that around 350,000 retail staff are threatened and verbally abused at work by members of the public each year. Theft from high street shops costs the government £2 billion a year. Smoking costs the British government £2 billion per year. Illegal drugs, including heroin, cocaine, marijuana and amphetamines and ecstasy, cost the British government £9 billion in lost revenues. Ageism is rampant in the UK, and age discrimination is estimated to cost £26 billion a year. A mistake? No, it's always just a mistake. You're embarrassing me. How many times have I told you not to stuff, touch my stuff? Huh? How many times? No. No. Yes. Then what's that? Huh? What is that? What is that? Every year, 1.5 million women experience at least one incident of domestic abuse. This is nearly 30,000 women a week. This is according to the British Crime Survey, 2006-2007. I'm embarrassing you, yes. what a joke, what an absolute joke. I embarrass you. No, it's always Stop you that embarrassing you all the time, Stop every it. single time. Domestic violence costs the British government £50 billion a year. That's more than they spend on defence each year. Oi, poor Alex. What have you been saying about me and my mates? Hey, what have you been saying? I ain't said nothing. What have you been saying, eh? I ain't said nothing. What have you been saying about us? Your dinner money, man. I, I ain't got nothing. I ain't Where got is nothing. it? What you got? Give me your dinner money. Now! Now. What have you got on your top this time? How many times have I told you about spilling stuff down your top? You end up like your dad. You end up stupid like him, because that is what's going to happen. You are a pain to me. I can't cope with this every day. Parents often do their children a reparable injury by criticizing them. It should be recognized as a crime. In reality, it is a crime of the worst nature for any parent to build an inferiority complex in the mind of a child through unnecessary criticism. Through the operation of the law of social heredity, anyone having control of the mind of a child may, through intense teaching, plant in that child's mind any idea, whether false or true, in such a manner that the child accepts it as true and it becomes as much a part of the child's personality as any cell or organ of its physical body and just as hard to change in its nature. The government reported that the number of young males who commit suicide each year in the UK had doubled over the last 10 years. In inner city areas, over 43% of children have considered suicide, and one in six children under the age of 11 have attempted suicide. Common causes cited include bullying, abuse, poverty, homelessness and alcohol abuse. Self figures! Uh, 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 400? What? 400. Did, what did you just say? Four, 400 for this week. That's all you've done for the whole week. Is that why you think 
I implore you. Y yes, Miss Audrey. Move your chair back here. Yes, Miss Audrey. Thank you. Right. What are your cell figures? Uh, I, I don't do this. The fear of criticism robs man of his initiative, destroys his power of imagination, limits his individuality, takes away his self-reliance, and does him damage in a hundred other ways. February 2008. A recent survey by the BBC found that 78% of employees had witnessed bullying at work. A Staffordshire University survey showed that 53% of all UK employees had been bullied at work. People changing jobs due to bullying, 3 million people will change their jobs this year as a result of bullying at work. Total cost to the UK government, £50 billion a year. Health campaigns have warned of the dangers of binge drinking and alcohol addiction. But social drinking has now emerged as a health risk too. More than 10 million people in England drink more than the recommended daily amount. Up to 22,000 deaths a year in England and Wales are associated in some way with drinking too much alcohol. That's twice the rate of 20 years ago. Binge drinking cost the UK government £20 billion pounds a year. Is it any wonder that between 10 and 15 million people in the UK suffer from depression? The total cost of mental health problems in England is currently more than £77 billion pounds a year, which is double previous estimates. The costs include NHS and private care for people with mental health problems. So, the total cost each year for the things we've already covered for the British government 236 billion pounds a year and this cost is rising each year we haven't even calculated many other crimes that cost the government billions of pounds these statistics reflect what's going on in the UK but all the countries of the world have some sort of problems one way or another relating to one or more of the crimes we've mentioned so far, we've been bombarded by statistics, and they're depressing, but they are based on facts. So far, we've been dealing with all the problems, but what about the solutions for all these problems? There is an idea that can solve most of the problems we've mentioned so far in this film. But first, you should know something about the man who's discovered this idea. I first had the idea for the documentary two years ago as I was approaching my 50th birthday. Um, I was living in Jersey uh, on a beautiful uh, island and at the time my girlfriend, uh, a wonderful lady, I said look I'm approaching 50 years old and I think I want to do something for charity. Uh, so I suggested because I had done boxing before that I would do maybe three rounds of boxing. I had enough time to prepare myself uh, physically. Uh, I already had the knowledge of boxing, but she uh, remonstrated with me and she said, look, you're getting too old now and you know, so forth and you can't do it and you know, you're gonna get hurt and so forth. So I thought about it and I thought, okay, I won't do it. But something, um, I wanted to do this as a way of celebrating, as a way of giving something back to charity for being alive for 50 years on this planet. But at the same time, um, I did not uh, sort of like forget that I wanted to do that. I wanted to still give something back. So for days and weeks and months, I would go fishing and relax and contemplate and philosophize and and suddenly uh, this idea just came to me and when the idea came to me and the way it came to me and how simple it was that was the shock to me um, more than anything else because it, it kind of narrows everything down to the basic uh, seed of what we are or how we develop our characters or how we develop our personalities and 
how we develop uh, achieving goals, etc., etc. Everything is to do with this idea. That's the most amazing thing about it, and that's what amazed me the most. This amazing idea does not ask you to give up your religion. This idea doesn't ask what part of the world you're from. This idea does not ask whether you're a man or a woman. This idea doesn't ask if you're rich or poor. This idea doesn't ask the color of your skin. This idea doesn't ask if you live in a tent or a house. This idea encourages you to practice your human rights in the world. This idea encourages you to excel in your personal goals in life. This idea encourages you to have a better understanding of all the people in the world. This idea encourages you to have more confidence in yourself. This idea encourages you to be a better person. This idea encourages you to relate to all the people in the world. This idea encourages you not to be inferior or superior to others than yourself. This idea encourages you to be proud of yourself and not to feel ashamed. This idea encourages you that you can encourage others to do great things. I've written letters to uh, Gordon Brown, the Queen, uh, Prince Charles. I have written to every uh, director of children's services in the UK. Uh, Children's TV, the Welsh Assembly, uh, UNESCO, uh, European Union. We can change things and we can change things for the better. The idea is actually for the governments to save money because no government wants to have their prisons full of people. No government wants to uh, talk about crimes that are being committed on our streets, domestic violence in our homes, um, lack of self-confidence and all these kind of problems, bullying, racism and it seems to uh, be everywhere. It's not just, um, I mean racism seems to go from uh, local government to police forces to football you know it's just a widespread thing and we can get rid of all this stuff with this simple idea we can get rid of all that your children are not your children they are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself they come through you but not from you and though they are with you they belong not to you you may give them your love but not your thoughts for they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls, for their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You may strive to be like them, but seek not to make them like you, for life goes not backwards nor tarries with yesterday. You are the bows from which your children, as living arrows, are sent forth, the archer, sees the mark on the path to the infinite and he bends you with his might so that his arrows may go swift and far. Let our bending in the archer's hand be for gladness for as he loves the arrow that flies he loves also the bow that is stable. 40 year plan affirmations. You are what you repeatedly do so therefore excellence is not an act but a habit. Aristotle. I think every living person can benefit from this uh, documentary. All things are man's, and he chooses that which he will have. Today he chooses in ignorance, tomorrow he shall choose in wisdom. Everything that's going on now around us, uh, whatever kind of problems we were talking about, it comes from lack of education, it comes from lack of self-esteem, lack of positive thinking. Men fly from creed to creed and find unrest. They travel in many lands and discover disappointment. They build themselves beautiful mansions and plant pleasant gardens and reap weariness, heaviness, and discomfort. Not until a man falls back upon the truth within himself does he find rest and satisfaction. Not until he builds the inward mansion of faultless conduct does he find the endless and incorruptible joy. And having obtained that, he will infuse it into all his outward doings and possessions. It has been established by psychologists and neuroscientists that every person in the world carries on an ongoing dialogue or self-talk 
of between 150 and 300 words a minute. This works out to between 45,000 and 51,000 thoughts a day. Most of our self-talk is harmless thoughts that serve our daily activities, like, I need to stop at the cleaners. The danger is when inner dialogue takes on a negative connotation, such as, I'll never be a winner, or, why does this always happen to me? Affirmations are how we communicate our conscious objectives and desires to both our conscious and subconscious minds for behavioural change. Life can be such fun. I am positive, focused and happy. William James described affirmative prayer as an element of the American metaphysical healing movement that he called the mind cure. He described it as America's only decidedly original contribution to the systemic philosophy of life. William James was a pioneering American psychologist and philosopher, trained as a medical doctor. He wrote influential books on the young science of psychology, educational psychology, and psychology of religious experience. Affirmations. The concept of affirmations has never changed in the history of mankind, even though man has developed and we're now in the modern 21st century. This statement is a fact, not fiction. Faith is the head chemist of the mind. When faith is blended with thought, the subconscious mind instantly picks up the vibration, translates it into its spiritual equivalent, and transmits it to infinite intelligence, as in the case of prayer. Affirmations have been used by every living person throughout history. This is a fact. And affirmations will be used by every living person who will come into this world in the future. This is a fact. How to develop faith? There comes now a statement which will give a better understanding of the importance the principle of auto-suggestion assumes in the transmutation of desire into its physical or monetary equivalent. Namely, faith is a state of mind which may be induced or created by affirmation or repeated instructions to the subconscious mind through the principle of auto-suggestion. Affirmations are the oldest known tools for the development and positive thinking of mankind. And they're also the only known tool for the development of the future of mankind. This is a fact. Repetition of affirmation of orders to your subconscious mind is the only known method of voluntary development of the emotion of faith. Affirmations are the only known tools that have not changed since the dawn of time. In the 20th century, thousands upon thousands of books have been written on the subject of achieving goals, personal development, personal transformations, self-esteem, positive thinking, the law of attraction, and healing your life through your mind. All these books are based on affirmations, even though they have different titles. No one is doomed to bad luck. There are millions of people who believe themselves doomed to poverty and failure because of some strange force over which they believe they have no control. They are the creators of their own misfortunes because of this negative belief, which is picked up by the subconscious mind and translated into its physical equivalent. 98% of these books are written for adults, adults who've strayed in their thinking and developed bad habits. The aim is for them to get back on track and be the person they can be and to live in a loving, giving world. All the books that have been written on personal development have been written for adults. The truth of the fact is that every living person in the world uses these same tools advocated in these books, but the vast majority of the people of the world are not aware of it, even though every living person on the planet uses these tools. Faith is the eternal elixir which gives life, power and action to the impulse of thought. Hard facts about affirmations. These hard facts are evident in all countries of the world. They're evident in all languages spoken in the world, and they're also evident in every living person of the world. 
thoughts which are mixed with any of the feelings of emotions constitute a magnetic force which attracts other similar or related thoughts. For example, if we take a year-old baby from anywhere in the world and that baby is learning to speak, you will find that the baby will repeat over and over again the same word until it becomes printed in the subconscious mind of that baby. It will be there until it becomes a habit. This is the basis of affirmations, which begins in every living person in the world. Affirmations can be found in every single school of the world. When school children are asked to repeat the alphabet over and over again till they know every single letter, this is affirmations. Affirmations are found in every religion of the world. If you recite a prayer over and over again, this is affirmations. Affirmations are found in every sport of the world. Repetition of action towards the attainment of any given goal is affirmations. Affirmations are repetition of thoughts. They are tangible, physical actions towards perfecting some desired goal. Rudyard Kipling recognised this when he said, of course, words are the most powerful drugs used by man. Muhammad Ali, throughout his life, repeated the immortal words, I am the greatest. He became known as the greatest boxer in the history of the sport, and he became the iconic sporting personality of the 20th century. By his commitment to affirmations, he confirmed the power of affirmations as fact. Mahatma Gandhi used the words liberation through non-violence. He inspired over 200 million people to take up the cause until it became a reality. And throughout, he used these words to liberate India from British rule. This is the power of affirmations. Martin Luther King was so inspired by Mahatma Gandhi that he used the same inspiration to win the hearts and minds of the people of the world towards the unfair and unjust treatment of black people in America where they had no rights. I have a dream became the beacon light of hope and the memorable mantra for millions in America. His immortal I have a dream speech was simply littered with affirmations. Any country that adopts this idea will reap the benefits of producing people that will excel themselves. They will have their people live in peace and harmony, reduce crime, bullying and domestic violence, and equally important, save trillions of pounds in the process. And that money can be used for better things, to make people's lives richer in terms of being proud of their country. Now the time has come for all people of the world to become responsible for all human beings on this planet. The time has come for us to put away our ignorance and look into how we can all collectively contribute to a better world and to contribute to a better future for all those who will come after us. There is no known way to have a better future for the world and the people of the world except this idea to put affirmations into every school in the world. This is the aim of this documentary. Please remember that our children are our future. In the immortal words of Nelson Mandela, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Like a computer, our mind processes all the information we input. Our beliefs and expectations are built up by the thoughts and suggestions we regularly give ourselves. Psychologists and neuroscientists have proven as a fact that you can change your daily habits within 21 days by doing something new, or you can break a habit in 21 days. In logic, an affirmation is a positive judgment. In law, an affirmation is a solemn declaration allowed to those who object to taking an oath, and it has equal legal standing. 
In the final draft of the 1787 Constitution of the United States of America, it states that the president must take an oath or affirmation before entering office. In new thought and positive development, an affirmation is a form of auto-suggestion. Affirmation can be viewed positively as a form of mobilization of one's inner resources. Life is all to do with human connection. All parents in the world want their children to be positive, healthy, happy, successful and confident in this life and to grow up respectful towards all human beings in the world. If a child lives with criticism, it learns to condemn. If a child lives with hostility, it learns to fight. If a child lives with ridicule, it learns to be shy. If a child lives with shame, it learns to feel guilty. But if a child lives with tolerance, it learns to be patient. If a child lives with encouragement, it learns confidence. If a child lives with praise, it learns to appreciate. If a child lives with fairness, it learns justice. If a child lives with security, it learns to have faith. If a child lives with approval, it learns to like itself. And if a child lives with acceptance and friendship, it learns to find love in the world. This is an example of how affirmations work. I love and respect myself. I love and respect myself. If a child grows up loving and respecting themselves, they will develop and mature with confidence and they will not stoop to carrying knives when they become teenagers, committing domestic violence in relationships when they become adults or bullying someone at work when they are in business. I love and respect my classmates. I love and respect my classmates. I love and respect all children in my class. A child will not have envy, jealousy or resentment towards any of their classmates and they will simply see them as loving children sharing a common cause of education together. I love and respect all the children in my school. I love and respect all the children in my school. I love and respect all the children in my school. When a child goes out into the playground at playtime that child will not see black, white, tall, skinny, fat, slim, rich or poor. They will see children as children and as a result this will cut out verbal or physical bullying in schools. I love and respect all the children in the world. I love and respect all the children in the world. I love all the children in the world. When that child is socialising and interacting with other children outside school, they will not see themselves as superior or inferior to other children. They will just see them as children like themselves. This will give them super confidence to grow spiritually as children and to have the confidence, understanding and sensitivity to become loving human beings when they mature into adulthood. There are thousands of books written on philosophy and psychology and they all say the same thing. Using affirmations every day helps influence the subconscious mind and you become what you repeatedly say to yourself. What we'd like to see is affirmations being used in schools 10 minutes every day in the morning starting from the primary years. I am passing on knowledge that was passed on to me through books of great thinkers and so forth. So all the credit should go to them, not to me. I believe the children are the future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter Remind us how we used to be
Everybody's searching for a hero People need someone to look up to Never found anyone who fulfilled that need A lonely place to be So I learned to depend on me I decided long ago Never to walk in anyone's shadow If I fail, if I succeed At least I live as I believe And no matter what they take from me They can't take away my dignity Because the greatest love of all Remind us how we 